This show is a proud member of the Blue Collar Roots Network and is created for professionals and people who know what they're doing already. The opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the network or the sponsors. Do everything according to government regulations, OSHA safety practices, and manufacturer listing and labeling instructions. Not just because someone said so on a podcast. Now, on with the show. You're listening to the Tool Pros Podcast. If you take all the combined tool knowledge of Tim the Toolman Taylor, Bob Vila, Tom Silva, and Nick Offerman, you get the Tool Pros, Billy Noth and Brent Ridley. Hello and welcome to the Tool Pros Podcast. This is your host, Brent Ridley. And I'm sitting virtually next to my co-host, like always, Billy Noth. How you doing, Billy? I'm doing super, Brent. A little tired from a crazy amount of shoveling for the first day of spring. I was going to ask you about that, man. I think you got like 15 inches or something. 15 inches. That's what we got in my yard. Mother Nature's all mixed up. Yep. We got a cool episode for you guys today. I'm really excited about this. But before we get into that, let me pause for a minute. Let's talk about KC Tool Co. KC Tool is a fantastic company. They specialize in some of the European hand tools, Wera, Weha, Nipix, some great, great hand tools. So guys, just go check them out, uh, kctoolco.com, and use the discount code TOOLPROS at checkout for your 10% off. Okay, now without further ado, let me introduce our wonderful guest for today, Chris Kors from Reed Instruments. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, gentlemen. Thanks for having me tonight. I'll tell you how this came about is for some of you guys out there, y'all may be aware there's like an online type company. It's called WTI or What Tools Inside is the name of it. And it has an app. So I guess it would be an app company, but they own an app and they do daily giveaways. So with these daily giveaways, they give you hints and stuff through social media, through a special presenter. And then you go on the app if you think you know what the model number is and you put it in. Well, I got to be the presenter for Reed Instruments one particular day, and then that's how Chris and I got hooked up. So guys, go check out What Tools Inside if you haven't. It's a really cool app, daily giveaways of really cool tools, so go check that out too. But it's kind of a neat story how we got involved and got hooked up. But Chris, why don't you give us a little background on what Reed Instruments is and who they are and what they do? So Reed Instruments, we're based out of North Carolina, Wilmington, uh, North Carolina. But as you'll probably pick up if you haven't already by my accent, I'm actually not from that area. I'm very familiar with snow. I'm actually located in Montreal, Canada. Oh, wow. So when you guys talk about your 16 inches that you said? Yeah, 15. About 15 inches. I mean, we don't really bat an eyelash at, uh, at that up here. And even though we're in spring, we've still got, I would say, looking outside my back window right now, about two and a half feet of snow outside. But obviously, we have the infrastructure and everything that allows us to deal with that kind of stuff. Anyway, without getting off track, like you said, I work with Reed Instruments. And essentially, we are a supplier of portable test and measurement equipment. Anything uh, that could be from your typical small digital stem thermometer all the way up to high-end specialized type instruments like thermal imagers and ultrasonic thickness gauges, uh, really a number of different test and measurement instruments. Very cool. I was going through your website earlier today and yeah, I didn't realize the wide assortment of stuff that you guys have. You got anywhere from like a megometer to like you said, to thermal imaging, all kind of cool stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So in the test and measurement, I guess you can say landscape, we would be really uh, positioned as kind of the economical price point of test and measurement equipment. So whereas a fluke multimeter may cost somewhere upwards of $400, $450, the same thing in a Reed Instruments line, pretty close in terms of specification, would be somewhere of the $275 to $290 range. So that's really our positioning, I guess you could say, in the marketplace. Very cool. I know you guys got a lot of variety of multimeters. Can you go over some of the few popular brands or a few of the popular styles that you guys sell and some of the features of them? Obviously, our multimeters would fall under our electrical category. And if you go on Reed Instruments, com. There's actually under the multimeter section, there's a comparison tool where you can see all of our meters and how they stack up one next to another. But essentially, we've got everything from a small auto range in pocket multimeter all the way up to our industrial unit that is capable of data logging, voltage and current, 
and it's also waterproof and drop tested. So really there's a wide variety of different types uh, depending on your application and needs. I have um, like insulation testers and megometers and stuff like that. Now, Billy and I are both in the HVAC trade and a megometer is a very important tool. And I checked out the price point of some of these megometers. They were very affordable for such a very important tool and a very sophisticated tool. Absolutely. And you touched on a really good point there when you talk about working in, in HVAC. Because there's over 180 different portable tools, I would say there's a good six to eight different types of industries that we would primarily sell into, HVAC being one of them. You guys are very familiar with, I'm sure, megometers, clamp meters, multimeters, but then just simple tools like the video borescope that you guys gave that review for us on what tools inside, our, our new R8500. I mean, really, there's so many tools that we offer and so many different applications that we're basically your one source for test and measurement equipment to find the portable tool that you need for your application. The Borescope's fantastic. I've actually used it in a few different applications, and it's been fantastic. And the Borescope, it had, comes with a standard, standard flexible head on it, but does it also have some attachments that attach onto it so you can make it a lot longer if you need to or something like that? So the R8500 is the new video inspection camera that you're speaking of. That comes standard with a 9 millimeter camera head, which is basically the industry standard at this time. But what we've done is we've launched a bunch of different accessories that you can use as add-on uh, products to the R8500. It could be anything from the different style camera head. So we've got a camera head that actually has a diameter of 3.9 millimeters. So that can get into really tight spots and, and areas that you can't otherwise see. Like you said, we also have extension cables. Uh, we've got an extension cable. We can actually go up to, we've tested it up to uh, 35 feet without losing any type of video quality or recording quality on the R8500. Yeah, 35 feet is a long way. That's impressive. Yeah, I'm just checking out all the different type of stuff you have here. Now, I came across a heat stress meter. Can you talk to me about what a heat stress meter is and what you would need it for? It really does depend on the area or the environment that you're exposed to. Just taking, for instance, I mean, if you often hear on the uh, weather network or, or whenever someone's giving the forecast, they'll say it's going to be 72 degrees today, but it feels like 84. And essentially what a heat stress meter can do is it can take the different types of measurements into consideration and put together what we call the what it feels like or the WBGT measurement based on either radiant sunlight or direct heat that the unit is exposed to. So this could be used outside for workers that are outside. Uh, OSHA does have uh, specific standards with regards to heat stress and what uh, an employee can be exposed to outside. And then taking that inside on a factory floor, let's say a heat treat facility that may get really uh, hot, this unit can be used by the safety department to ensure that they're following specific standards to ensure that their employees are safe. Very cool. So this is going to give you the feels like temperature, not the actual temperature. Is that what you're telling me? Exactly. Yes. It will take humidity into consideration and direct exposure to, uh, to temperature uh, to give you that what it feels like temperature. Now, does it just do the heat side or will it do like wind chill in the cool side also? For the heat, yeah, it's specifically catered towards higher temperature environments, so it's specifically on the heat side. Do they make a meter that does like wind chill or something of that nature? Do you know? I have no idea. They would have probably just a standard thermometer that would take into consideration like wind chill. Living in Canada, I know that uh, <laughs> they often say that it's much colder. It feels like it's much colder than it actually is. They would have probably some sophisticated specialized piece of or some type of thermometer. But at this time, we don't offer such a portable instrument. Well, yeah, that's cool that you even make a heat stress meter because that's something that I really never heard about before. And I didn't even think about how that was calibrated. That's pretty neat. Yeah, actually, you bring up a really good point when you talk about uh, calibration. So one thing that is really important in the test and measurement world is certification on these products. So oftentimes when you have, let's take a sound level meter, for instance, if I was a law enforcement agency and I wanted to go near new developments of a highway that's going through a residential area or close to it, I could take a sound level meter and go to that area and record over a certain amount of time to ensure again that the exposure 
is below the recommended OSHA standards. It's great that these instruments are reading and giving you measurements, but what a lot of people need is a certificate that provides traceable results, traceability based on the measurements that they're seeing. With all of our instruments, sorry, not all, but the majority of our instruments, we do offer what we call NIST traceable calibration certificates so that there is that calibration cert that's good for a period of one year from when the unit's purchased. That person using that instrument knows that it's actually saying whatever it says on the unit itself. That's a big part. Yeah, that's fantastic. Do you guys do the recertification also on it? If I needed it done after a year, can I send it back to you guys? Yeah, we do. So typically, I mean, we do have our own laboratories, but essentially we would want to give that business or provide that business through one of our authorized distributors. Some of our distributors have their own metrology calibration labs and recertification labs. And if not, then they would send it back to us and then we would do it for them. But yes, we do offer those services. Looking here about some of your other stuff that you guys got, you have like some moisture detection meters. It looks like it's got two probes. I think I've seen these in action. I've never used one personally myself. It looks like the pin style has like two pins. And do you have to like puncture the material that you're trying to test? And does that give you like a reading for moisture? Is that how that works? Yeah, they're pretty straightforward in terms of how to use them. There's basically two types of moisture meters. An intrusive moisture meter, which you just mentioned, has the pins on on them. And a non-intrusive or a pinless moisture meter, which we offer as well. It really depends on your application. So when you're talking about someone that may be doing um, restoration or remediation work and looking for potential water damage in baseboard moldings, uh, they could very easily use one of those pin style ones and go along the baseboard and detect where that moisture may be. Or if there was moisture potentially behind a wall, like leak in a foundation, they could use the pinless moisture meter to just go up the gypsum board and not damage it in any way to pinpoint where the moisture is. Okay, I see that they have like, when you say, well, you like the pin style, yeah, it's kind of straightforward. It's got two little pins sticking out of it. It looks like you put it in the material. It tells you now the pinless, for those of you who don't know what they look like, it just looks like a meter and it has a little skinny shaft on it. It looks like it has a ball on the top of it. Do you take that ball and does that ball physically have to touch the material, like just rub it on the material to tell, or do you not have to touch the material? How does that work? So in the case of the one that has the ball on it, that's our R6010. Uh, so that's essentially where the sensor is. So that ball does have to touch the material under test. But there are some other meters. So we do, like I mentioned, we have a pin and a pinless. We have uh, a new one that we recently launched that has both of them. So it's a dual pin and pinless meter. And on that one, the sensor is built into the, right on the back of the unit. So you basically rub the unit right up the wall and that will detect it when the back is touching the material that you're trying to test. Very cool. Now, what does it display? Does it display like a percentage? And like, I don't even know what a good moisture reading versus a bad moisture reading would even be. It is displayed in terms of percentage. Now, you can set these because, for instance, just taking this a step further, we do have one other model that's specifically made for wood moisture detection. So it's got 170 species of wood built into the unit and you choose your species of wood before because some wood might actually naturally carry more moisture than others. So this will calibrate it depending on that structure and then it will give you a reading in terms of percentage and some of them even also say dry, at risk, or mold present or potential of mold present as indicators so you don't have to go based on percentage if you're just looking for a quick check on certain materials. So it'll even pop up and it'll tell you if you have a danger or have an issue. That's really nice. That's a very cool feature. I'm looking at some of your thermal hygrometers and the digital psychrometers. You look like you have a very nice selection of psychrometers and things like that. Being an HVAC, we use those all the time. Well, I'm looking at one like the 8706. Looks like it's nice. Looks like it shows you your humidity percentage and it'll give you... A wet bulb and a dry bulb right there next to each other, which is nice, all on one screen. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, you'll notice too that a lot of our instruments, there's basically two versions of the majority of our instruments. And we offer a standalone, a very basic in terms of just taking measurements on the spot. But then we also offer a data logging version. So for instance, if you were to look at the thermal hygrometers and psychrometers, 
We offer, like you said, the 8706, that's very basic, but then we also offer the SD3007 that can data log over a certain period of time. So our SD series, you can put in an SD card right into the unit, no software is required. You can set your sampling rate and any type of parameters with regards to your sampling rate that you want to take for your time, and then any type of alarms, and then you can set it up, put it on a tripod if you wish, and let it run for as long as you'd like. You can come back after a certain amount of time and then just check what your readings were. So obviously some of these have better applications. So before when I did talk about that law enforcement officer checking sound by a newly constructed highway, you could go and set up a sound level meter on a tripod, leave it for 24 hours, go back and get all your results instead of standing there. So you can see peak times during the day. What is it like during rush hour? And it really, our data logging series gives you a lot more information with a lot less time commitment, I guess you could say. That's what I was going to say was a lot of the stuff I see is available both with and without data logging, which is key, I guess, for us in trying to figure out the problems that you can't figure out when you're on the spot. The issues where it's happening overnight and it's not like we're going to set up a cot in somebody's living room and stay overnight to see what the issues are. So a lot of this temperature and humidity data logging and electrical data logging is amazing. That's it, exactly. Guys, I want to take a minute right here to thank Robinair. They are a great sponsor of this podcast, and without them, we wouldn't be able to make this possible. We thank them very much, and I just wanted to take a minute and highlight some of their new leak detectors they got coming out. They have three different models coming out, the LD3, the LD5, and the LD7. I'm excited for all these models because they all have really cool features. The LD3 is kind of a base model unit. It comes with a two-year warranty. It's made right here in the USA. It's got a 17-inch probe. It's got a real short warm-up time. It works on all common refrigerants, R410A, R22, 134, even works with R1234YF, which you find in cars nowadays. The sensitivity is down to 0.05 ounces a year. It's got a long life sensor, 10-year lifespan on the sensor, which is crazy and unheard of. Some of these others you got to change out yearly, biannual, stuff like that. This thing will last for 10 years. Seems very cool because I've heard of the infrared and the heated diode, but I haven't heard of this, and I'm excited to try it out and see what it's all about. They also have the LD5. The cool thing about the LD5 is it has a color graphic LCD display on it. So as you're searching for those unique refrigerants, this detectors will do them all. The LD7 has all the features that we've already talked about, plus it has a UV light for detecting injected dye. So that little UV flashlight that you see out in your truck, you can throw that away if you buy LD7 because you already have that built into your leak detector, which is awesome. And it also has a pinpoint graphing mode for displaying leak sizes over a time window. So like over a period of time, you can graph a leak size, which seems so awesome and so cool. I don't know that anybody else on the market can do that today. So guys, if these sound like some interesting features to you, go check out RobinAir.com. Great company, great people, great products. Go give them a chance. Let them know the tool pro sent you. Chris, I'm going to put you on the spot here. And So on your website, as I scroll down and I look at the different, I'm under temperature. And as I look at the different pictures here, I look at thermal imaging here. It says thermal imagers. And there's two models on the picture, but as I click on it and I get further into it, there's only one model, which is the R2100. Do you guys have a future model that's coming soon, or is that just kind of a generic picture for that? Actually, there should be two models on there. I should check with our marketing department and see uh, why that other unit's not on there, because at this time we do offer two thermal imagers, the R2100 that you mentioned and the R2050. Those are two different ones. The R2100 is a 160 by 120. Do, do you guys use thermal imagers at all in your trade? Yes, there's a lot of different uses that we can use them for in HVAC and different things like that. I don't own one. I've been looking for an affordable one to buy, but there's a lot of uses for them. Yes, sir. So essentially, our, our 2050 is your entry-level type camera, 80 by 80 in terms of resolution. This would be good for up-close type of inspections on electrical panels, bearings, motors, even some building envelope scans from the inside and from close proximity on the exterior. Whereas our 160 by 120 camera has adjustable and or interchangeable lenses where you can do like a fisheye lens or a telephoto lens uh, to get in on things closer. And those can be used for outside building inspections and a number of different applications that require that higher resolution, more sensitive results. 
Very cool. Yeah, thermal imaging's come a long way, and it's definitely it's got its place in all kind of trades. Not only HVAC, you know, like you were saying, electrical, like any kind of industrial stuff. They're checking any type of machinery for overheating, things like that. There's all kind of applications for thermal imaging, and I think a very uh, economic version like the R2050 that you guys got, which really runs, it's a full standalone meter that looks like it runs around $1,000, maybe a little bit more. But it, it's a fantastic little option there, and that's definitely something I'm going to think about adding to my tool bag. Now, the thermal images that I have are quite a bit smaller, but they come in so handy, especially in the HVAC field. So you guys are definitely stepping up the game, especially with the R2100, which looks like a very nice little setup, especially since it does have those interchangeable lenses for the different viewing angles and things. So I'm impressed with that. There's so many, like you mentioned, there's so many applications that these are used for. I mean, we get requests all the time for different types of uses, even equestrial to to see how the blood flow is going in horses' legs and, and to diagnose health issues. We get calls all the time for everything for these type of cameras. It's really quite interesting. No, I'll be honest. I have used mine to see what my children's temperatures were <laughs> to see if they were running hot. So, <laughs> Now, I did notice that, talk about another stuff you got. You got gas and leak detectors. It looks like you have some refrigerant leak detectors, which is cool. I never even knew you guys made something like that. And you got some combustible gas leak detectors too. That's pretty neat. That's it. Yeah. So anything from, like you mentioned, refrigerant leak, uh, combustible gas, in the same category here, we do have your standalone carbon monoxide meters. We have a new model R9450 that we just launched that can detect carbon monoxide, temperature and humidity all in a unit. And that can be put on a desktop or like on a wall somewhere. And then, yeah, pretty much all types of gas. But again, we do stick to portable style gas detection. It's not your fixed PPE, uh, like your BW personal gas detectors that we offer. At this time, it's just sticking to portable for quick testing in environment situations. Gotcha. Now, I saw you had an ultrasonic leak detector. Is that like a popular leak detector? I was thinking you could even use that for like trying to find water leaks and different things like that, like maybe under a slab, trying to find a water leak or something like that. Is that maybe what it could be used for? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's extremely sensitive. It can be used for water, gas, or air in a number of different applications for sure. Yeah, this particular unit has an earphone jack so that you can use it in loud environments. And then it also comes with an adjustable wheel so that uh, you can adjust the sensitivity on the unit as well. What's really interesting is it can be used in conjunction with its um, little counterpart. It's a transmitter. So if you want to generate a leak signal through something, you can set it up and then create something that the unit itself is easy to detect. So it's a nice little kit. That is cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think about that. So when you say the generator, so it would like... You would hook it to a, let's just say like it's a water pipe or something or a air vacuum pipe or something. So you would hook it to this pipe and it would push the signal through there. Is that how it would be? And you kind of find out where it's leaking out at? Correct. The transmitter has almost like a little straw type pipe on it that you could hook up to your pipe. And then you can use your other detector to just go down the pipe and scan to see where there may be any strength and signal to further prove that there may be some leakage. Very cool. All the time we come across houses around here because we do HVAC and we do plumbing. So we come across homes around here all the time that have leaks in the slab or a lot of times some of these commercial places they have leaks in the parking lot, things like that. So we have to call in a leak detector. He comes out here and he basically has one of these ultrasonic deals and he puts on his headphones and he walks around for about three minutes and he charges us $700 and he goes along his way. So I'm thinking we can buy some couple meters like this and do our own and save some serious dough that way. That's it. Or you can start your own company. That's it. I can start (laughs) charging people $700 for five minutes of work. (laughs) There you go. Exactly. I've covered everything I kind of wanted to cover. Billy, you got some stuff you wanted to cover? I do. I have the R5600 mega ohmmeter, which I love. By far one of the best ones that I've used. But what I'm curious about is the R3002, the digital manometer. That comes with a USB cable and everything. So is that data logging also? Yes. So this one does data log. Essentially, it comes with the software already in the the kit itself. So you can basically set it up again, set your sampling time, set up the parameters that you want, and then start your recording. And then once all is done, hook it up to your computer via the attached USB cable, 
and then uh, download the information and analyze it on the software. I like that. I've never seen that with a, a manometer. It's a pretty unique feature, actually. There's very few manometer suppliers out there that would offer that type of feature on their digital manometer. Now, is that something that you can use for gas pressure, like testing manifold? Is the resolution low enough? Not for this particular unit, no. Although we are looking at potentially launching something that would be able to do that. Okay. So you heard it here first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to ask you guys a question, you'd mentioned before that you do get involved in some plumbing. Yes, sir. What do you guys use as far as inspection? Like, Would you use ever a pipe inspection camera? Yeah, absolutely. We have an inspection camera now that we run down there all the time to see what the clog is and see what's going on. A lot of times you get roots infiltrated into the pipe or into the main drain line, different things like that. And that's absolutely something that we have and we use quite regularly. Yes, sir. I ask because we do. One of our best selling units is the R9000. It's basically a Pelican style hard case and an inspection camera and seven inch monitors built into the case. The unit itself goes up to about 128 feet in distance and it records both video and takes images with an SD card. This unit itself, there's a number of accessories that we launched, a 512 hertz transmitter and a receiver so that if you do detect that blockage or route that has set into the main drain, you could use that receiver on the top ground and figure out exactly where your camera head is located at that time. A unit that we launched that is doing very, very well since we introduced it. That is nice. That's very cool. Now, I assume everything's waterproof with it. Correct. Absolutely. Very neat. Yeah, I'm looking at all the accessories it has on there. It has, it has a remote on it, so you could do like use the recording, record, start and stop on, is that kind of stuff? Is that what it'd be used for? That's it. And what we really had that remote for is that if you're not working with someone else and you're alone and you're trying to feed the camera head through the drain, that way you can be a little bit further away from the unit itself and just use the remote to control the start and stop recording as you see the screen from a distance. Very cool. That looks very, very nice. Yeah. So it's loaded with a lot of features. But again, just back to my initial positioning of read instruments in the marketplace, that camera, uh, whereas the competitor's camera may be three or four thousand dollars our camera is, is under fifteen hundred dollars yep. wow that's a really good deal for what you got how long is that reel that comes with it so it comes with a standard 65 foot reel but that can be swapped out we do have 131 feet a uh, 40 meter cable that that can be swapped out for it's pretty nice i will tell you one thing that i would like to see outside of that i guess would be if we could get the video image kind of separated from the reel where it's not all like all together because sometimes you just don't have a ton of room where you're at and so you got to kind of have them a little bit separate is it can you take that screen out of that box or can you do something like that with it yes it actually has a video out so you could potentially set up a second monitor wherever you wanted to set it up and have that display essentially outputted to another display very cool very neat any thoughts of making any of it to be whether it be a smartphone or tablet compatible, as far as the video out? That'd be a great feature. There's so much movement towards applications. I'm sure you guys have seen, you can get a stud finder on the app store. Right. <laughs> like, how is that even possible? <laughs> There's so much movement towards mobile apps and different things like that. I mean, we're in the process of implementing a few new things that would have to do with mobile. But again, we want to make sure that we're confident behind the software and the technology before we launch anything. Absolutely. Chris, you got anything else you want to cover, my man? No, no. I think it's been great talking with you guys. Again, I really appreciate the time and the hospitality for having me on your show. No, man. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. It's been a fantastic time. I've learned a lot about Reed Instruments. and I'm definitely going to go out and purchase at least the thermal imager, maybe some other stuff that we talked about today. Okay, well, thanks a lot, guys. And we'll continue to work hard on our end to come up with new and innovative products that meet the test and measurement demand that's out there right now, including your HVAC needs. Yeah, can't wait to see what you come up with. Sounds good. Well, like I say, thank you guys so much. We appreciate everybody who's listened this far to the end. Thank you, guys. You guys are the best. We appreciate everything that everybody does. All of our listeners, they're great. If you like what we're doing, please go on to the iTunes store. Give us a review. Let us know how we're doing. Your feedback is what drives us. It lets us know whether we're doing good, bad, or indifferent. You guys are what matter, the listeners. 
Thank you so much. And once again, thank you to our sponsors, Robin Air, KC Tool. You guys are great. We certainly appreciate it. We will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for listening to the Tool Pros Podcast. The best way to listen to this podcast is by using your smartphone or other web-connected device and subscribing using the podcast app on Apple devices or the Stitcher app or Google Store for Android devices. You can find all of the shows on the Blue Collar Roots Network by going to bluecollarroots.com. From all of us at Blue Collar Roots, thank you for listening.